questions. Um, Doug, are you okay if I read my quote here? Um, this meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Doug, where'd you go? I'm, I'm still here. Okay, good. You're, you're on. <laughs> Great, thank you. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the June 23rd, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings at this time. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting, which follows the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting that follows the public hearing, but you need not do so. The results of tonight's public meeting will be made available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839 anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inland wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning construction. And with this, I'll ask our acting clerk, Jennifer Wolf, to read the legal notice, unless she doesn't have it, in which case I'll read it. I'm here. Oh, Mark you are? Ben. I'm sorry, Mark. Please go ahead then. <laughs> okay. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following application seeking certificates of appropriateness. Application number 5020-20, Amy Northrop Whitroff, Whit Whitor seeking to install an 84 foot long by 42 foot wide by 53 inch high chicken coop at the rear yard at 17 Center Street. Application number 5021-20, Julie M. Costello seeking to install a six foot cedar fence with lattice top from left side of the house to the left property line also install a four foot black aluminum fence to surround in-ground pool in the rear of yard at 341 Main Street. Application number 5022-20, Judith Keene seeking to install a six foot stockade fence along right property line at 126 Broad Street. Application number 5023-20, Stephen Caprio, Seeking to, install, uh, seeking, seeking to construct a two-story addition extending 16 feet off the rear of the home with materials to match existing at 311, 311 Garden Street. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-28 Three, six. Live participation is available, available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to, le wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield, Connecticut, the eighth day of June, 2020. 
Thank you very much, Commissioner Raymond. And sorry, Mark, I gave you short shrift, uh, did not realize uh, you had logged in. I will say that at this point, we normally uh, take attendance and uh, it appears that all members of the commission are here tonight, uh, but for Commissioner Mead. That means we have uh, Commissioners Ovian, Wolf, Raymond, uh, and we also have uh, Commissioner, uh, pardon me, we have uh, Commissioner Lyons as well. Uh, and then we have three alternates with us tonight, uh, Emily Zambrello, uh, Chris, uh, Damian Krako, and Vasek Miglas. Uh, among the alternates, uh, could I uh, hear from the alternates as to uh, who will be voting tonight in the vacancy place? You may need some discussion first to uh, determine amongst yourselves who has waited the longest to participate as a voting member? I believe it's Damien's turn. Thank Sounds you, Emily. Fine. Sounds in, fine. In that case, we would welcome the participation of uh, Emily and uh, Vasek uh, during the discussion portions of the meeting, although the votes will go to Damien. Thank you. So uh, let's begin with application number 5020. That's Amy Northrop Wittorf, the project at 17 Center Street. Uh, welcome, Amy. If you could just identify yourself for the record, please, with your uh, home address. Good evening, everyone. I'm Amy Wittorf. I live at 17 Center Street. Welcome. Thank you. So, Amy, I saw that you provided uh, documentation that was shared with the commission. Is there anything you wanted to add uh, uh, to that information that's already been provided in document form? Um, I tried to um, show on the little drawing I made, it's not very good. The area where I want to put the coop, it's under the tree. Um, it falls within the regulations of zoning. Uh, chicken coops need to be in shade. Uh, that's also the level area that falls within the zoning regulations. Um, so that's why I want to put it there. And I did mention that I did want to move it around, but not very far, like two or three feet one way or the other. The coop is small. It's uh, seven feet long, three and a half feet wide, four feet high. When you say you want to be able to move it around, do you mean uh, seasonally or? No, just, just to move it so the, the grass can come back underneath it. I see. Just move it like three feet to one side and then in a very, it, it's not a lot of room that I have to put it that's level and in the shade. Understand. Thank you for that additional information. Uh, is there, are there any questions of any commissioners uh, for the applicant? <clears throat> And if you could identify yourself uh, when speaking, that would be really helpful. And if there Amy, are no, I'm sorry. I, I do, I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, Amy, it's Jennifer Wolf. I do have one question. It's actually not on your application, but while I have you, I've had a couple people ask me about the fact that you have two driveways, two curb cuts at your house. Um, and my understanding is that you can only have one is that something that you had permission for? I, I'm not sure how it works. I haven't been able to give people an answer to that question. We haven't had a, a contractor that we've been able to uh, give us a date to put the second curb cut in. Um, we did discuss it with the um, zoning official last year when we started to do it. We understood that we could do that, but we did need to pull a permit for the actual curb cut. So once we can get a contractor and get a date to do that, we will go for. Um, okay, so you do have to request a uh, permit. Yes. It's something that they have to approve. Okay. Yes. All right, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Sorry to be off topic. Oh, it's fine. Thank you. All right, any other commissioners with questions about uh, the application? Hearing none, uh, Amy, thank you for joining us for oh, the meeting done. tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I have um, public oh, comment. Oh, that's right. Uh, I, well, I haven't gotten to the oh, uh, sorry. public comment. Sorry. Okay. That's fine. Um, 
I just wanted to thank Amy for coming uh, to the meeting in person and welcome her to stay for the hearing, although she need not do so. At this point, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application, uh, aside from uh, our historic district coordinator who will be reading two letters into the record shortly. Hearing none, uh, I will uh, ask that Kim proceed at this time. Thank you. I have a letter dated June 17th, 2020. Dear Kim and the members of the Historic District Commission, my wife Eileen and I live at 23 Center Street and I am writing in opposition to the proposed installation of a chicken coop next door at 17 Center Street. Our chief concern is odor and sanitation where ver and where vermin may be attracted to the coop and possibly health as chickens could become a vector for disease. Assuming that Ms. Widorf does take all precautions when setting up the chicken coop, who will monitor those high standards so they are maintained. We are concerned that over time the chicken coop could be, become an eyesore, adversely affecting our lovely piece of the village and becoming a liability should we decide to sell. We have lived in, tw in Old Weathersfield for over 25 years and in that time we have never objected to any of the applications put forward but now we are forced to speak out against this proposal. As a matter of record my wife and I have had a proposed sunroom rejected by the HDC because the roof was white and could be seen from Garden Street and now we are being asked to give our consent to a chicken coop being installed 25 feet from our property line and adjacent to our family room where we do all of our dining and relaxing. We, under, we do understand that Ms. Widorf has every right to petition the HDC and we do value her as a neighbor for 10 years with no disagreements but for these reasons, as stated above, we are asking that the HDC reject application number 5020-20. Thank you, Jim and Eileen Felice, 23 Center Street, Old Weathersfield, Connecticut. I have one more dated June 20th, 2020. Uh, addressed to Historic District Commission in regards to application 5020-20. John Woodorf and Amy Northrop Woodorf are applying for permission to erect a small professionally built hen house for six chickens. They have been our neighbors since they moved to Weathersfield many years ago. We have always found them to be considerate people and we have no problem with their request to do this. They have a double lot so they have plenty of room to meet all of, all of the space requirements set by the town. I believe that John is a veteran and Amy is an experienced professional historian who has selected to come and run the Weathersfield Historical Society out of a field of many capable applicants. We share a common border with them and have no reservations about their plans. Howard A. Willard, Jr., 141 Main Street, Weathersfield. That's it. Thank you. I um, already asked if there was anyone in the queue uh, that's at the meeting that wanted to speak for or against and hearing none, I'll um, move. Sure. Uh, I'm just asking you to identify yourself, please. Um, my name is Arden Adamo. I live, my mom is Amy Woodorf. Certainly. And so that would be the same address. Yes. Um, uh, you, I just you, wanted to speak to the care of the chickens. Um, I would be the one taking care of the chickens and I have done a lot of research as to what they need and how to minimize, um, in regards to that one letter, um, odor and um, vermin. We have a product that's coming in that is an organic that will be minimizing the smell of the chickens because we do realize that is something that may bother people. And overall, I think it would be a good experience to have the chickens and it, it would be blocked from view and our neighbors would be not affected at all by their um, presence. Thank Arden, Arden. Uh, thank you for, thank you for adding, your adding your comments. comments. I, I would just ask if you're going to be the primary caretaker, uh, uh, what are you planning to do uh, in your absence uh, should school or uh, other obligations bring you away from Weathersfield? Are you training uh, your parents on uh, how to manage things Yes, I am. My mother um, is helping me every step of the way, and it actually is not certain at this point whether or not I will be 
going to um, school in the fall because of the pandemic. Sure. I, again, I'm uh, not, uh, I just bring just it up as a possibility, as a possibility since everyone is busy, everyone is busy uh, uh, and, and a lot of things are in the air right now. Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, there, are there any other questions of any other commissioners while we have the hearing uh, on this open? Uh, if this, um, anything that just occurred during the public comment would trigger a question. If there are none, then I thank uh, Arden for uh, joining us as well, uh, following her mother, Amy, and the two uh, letters that were written by Kim. So we'll move to application number 5022. That would be Judith Keene, the project at 126 Broad Street. Yeah. Welcome, Judy. I did um, see her earlier. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Anyway. There you are. Great. Go ahead. Yeah. You're I'm all here. set. Thank you, Judy. Uh, I'll ask, is there anything in addition to the paperwork that you uh, submitted to our coordinator that you wanted to say at this time? I did send it to um, Kim a picture of the uh, trailer that's going to be installed um, near my property line. It's the shared property line, uh, line obviously. Uh, it's a going to be an 18-foot trailer, and it's black. Kim, do you have that? Can it you was bring added, that She did share it, it with part of the file. Okay, she did. Part okay. It's, it's quite imposing. Um, and uh, the one that I sent, I'm not sure exactly the length of that, but it would be similar. It would be 18 feet, and which is legal. Um, previous to this, there was an RV that was in the same location and the planning and zoning decided that it was, um, well, actually it was uh, tabled and they withdrew the request. They wanted a variance because it was 24 feet long. And now I have a, um, a trailer that is going to be put on the property. I wish that HDC would become more involved with outbuildings and um, uh, trailers, boats, whatever, that end up in people's backyards that are visible from the street and I think are uh, generally an eye store. Um, you know, we're talking about a chicken coop. Um, this is much larger than the chicken coop. Um, so, um, you know, if you're going to be talking about a chicken coop, then uh, you should be talking about uh, oversized vehicles, etc., in, in yards. But I'm choosing to put up a six foot fence, um, not because I wish to, but because I need to, to block the view of this vehicle. So that's why I'm asking for permission to put up the fence. Understand your, um, sh appreciate your sharing your uh, comments at this time, uh, Judy. Are there questions of any commissioners for you? And I should just note before we go further, uh, I uh, thank Vasek for pointing out to me that I skipped from one J to another, uh, missing uh, Miss Julie Costello. We will get to her right after this hearing is uh, completed. Um, Mrs. Keene, so the trailer that they had proposed before was a camper. Were they going to live in it or just use it, park it yep. there? As a going to park it there to use uh, when they went away camping. And as I say, the uh, on road trips, okay. planning and zoning never made a decision because they withdrew the, I think they realized that it was not going to be passing. So they withdrew it and they moved it off the property. And then this uh, trailer. It looks like a car carrier to me. Um, yeah, it, it, it's something that it, you're anticipating. I'm just curious because, as you know, we only regulate structures. I do know I, that. I agree. It's frustrating because this amounts to a structure if it ends up sitting there, not moving, and it's not being utilized as a car carrier, but instead is being utilized as a structure that happens to have wheels. It's going um, to be used to transport their four wheelers for their children okay. when, when they take them off site. But otherwise, I believe it's going to be a storage unit for them for the rest of the time. Okay. 
All right, and it, your understanding is it's just under the length that would otherwise be regulated somewhere else? It's 18 feet, so that's within the limits. Okay, I understand. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of any other commissioners for Mrs. Keene? Hearing none. Uh, Judy, thank you for joining us this evening. You're welcome to stay for the public meeting. Um, and I will ask at this point if there's any comment uh, from any member of the public that has logged in tonight. Hearing none, Kim, do you have anything for this application? I don't. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks again, Mrs. Keene. And uh, I will at this point retreat uh, back to application number 5021. That's Julie Costello, the project at 341 Main Street. Thank you, Julie, for joining us. Let me unmute I, myself. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. All Perfect. Set. Sorry about that. Uh, for the record, Julie Costello, my house is 341 Main Street. Thank you and, uh, for joining us this evening. And I'll ask you, as I ask uh, the other applicants, if there's anything they wanted to add at this time, uh, in addition to the documentation that was provided to our coordinator. For the most part, it speaks for itself. We'd like to put it in a pool. I've tried to find the fencing material that I think would be uh, the prettiest in the neighborhood and that people would uh, like the best. But um, if the commission has thoughts, on something that would be better. I am open to that. Um, so I am very flexible in this. I just really want to be able to put in a pool. The reason why we're asking for the six foot privacy fence is because we've noticed a lot of foot traffic going by the house because of the coronavirus. A lot of people are home now. Uh, so if I'm running back to my pool in a towel, I just like to have that little <laughs> bit of privacy. So that's what that's for. Certainly understandable. And we'll note that the plot plan seems to show that it runs uh, from the back corner of the property. Uh, so it's relatively far back since your house is uh, very long front to back. Yeah, it would be basically if you look at the house from the street, you'll notice um, we have the, the flower gardens and a little green area right by our patio. Then there's a bunch of trees that are rows of Sharon. The six foot privacy fence would actually go right behind that. You probably won't see it much, too much in the summer, um, but just for those, those days when we want to swim and there's no foliage on the trees, we just wanted to have that there. And then you submitted a second uh, fencing material as well for the other side of the fence. I mean, Correct. the other side of the pool. Correct. I, I was proposing a, a black aluminum fence around the pool. It seems to me, I was trying to think of safety when it comes to the pool. And I, I thought that was the best material. But again, I'm open to any suggestions. I'm very new to this. And is that on three sides? I would do the on four aluminum? sides. I would do four sides. Okay, but the... There, oh, is, I, is the privacy fence, the privacy fence is, a, is just a uh, one plane, isn't that right? That's correct. Right. And, and so the pool will be a little bit behind that. Right, but are you planning to um, integrate the aluminum fence with the privacy fence, or is the aluminum fence going to be on four sides behind the privacy fence? Four sides behind the privacy fence. Thank you. All right, uh, are there any other questions of any other commissioners at this time for the applicant? Hearing none, Julie, thank you for joining us and for uh, being patient when I uh, skipped over your application. Sorry no about that. I will ask at this time if there's any member of the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, uh, I'll ask Kim if she has anything in writing. I don't think she does uh, from any outside, uh, any uh, public comment. I do not. Great. So that leaves us uh, with application number 5023. Uh, that would be Stephen Caprio. And before Stephen starts, again, Julie, you're welcome to stay for the public meeting. We'll be getting to it very shortly since, according to our agenda, I have just reached the last item. Is Mr. Caprio with us? I see him right now. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Stephen, for joining us. This is for the project at 311 Garden Street that uh, we were uh, commenting about the abundance of uh, documentation for. So we're uh, very appreciative of that. 
uh, and also appreciative of uh, Commissioner Wolf uh, for distributing it to all of us uh, so that we'd have a chance to review it for tonight's meeting. Is there anything that you wanted to let us know um, before we go further in our discussions? And I'll just note for the record that you took advantage of the opportunity to have a pre-application appearance before us. And thank you for acknowledging uh, the value of that when uh, you're in your documentary application here, making reference to it for the record. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, thanks for having me tonight. I think the only thing I would add is that um, we did, uh, did design the house mindfully to kind of blend in with how it occurs right now and to look kind of seamless. Uh, also took advantage of the comments you all gave me from the informal meeting and did switch that one window that's actually to a bathroom to kind of give the side of the house more of the random type of layout that it had before, um, which I actually thought was a great idea. So took advantage of your comments. So I appreciated that. Um, the only other thing I would add is that um, we were mindful to pick a window spec that allowed us to customize the sash size uh, in order to best match the windows as best we could. And we also plan on painting the house white with black window trim, uh, which should also minimize the difference from the aluminum to the existing wood windows. Um, other than that, if you all have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them or take any comments. Uh, could I ask you what color the uh, window jams uh, in the gelled one will be? Are they available in black? The window jam is in the, the bottom portion, right? Oh, uh, actually the side carrying mechanism. And I'm only asking about that uh, maybe out of turn here, uh, but because you have to mention the window painting black. Um, the, oh, the, out, the, outside, uh, the outside aluminum is gonna be black, yes. The um, window itself, uh, most modern windows like this gelled one have a carrying mechanism that uh, is visible from the inside of the house. When the window is down, you see the upper jam. And from the outside of the house, you see the lower jam. So it, it's just, and, and if this is already called out in here, um, perhaps one of the other commissioners can holler to me about it. But uh, that was one thing I did not spot earlier. Um, and that is that sometimes if you have a situation where you're going to have black sash and black trim around the window. If you can get a dark jam as an option, it may be something that uh, gives you an all black look. In any event, at this I point, think, I um, kind of got ahead of myself. In, just to Sorry. jump in, Doug, I think the windows are pretty customizable. And so I think that maybe that's something that should be specced in our steps because I did not notice that detail in the material provided. Vasek, I don't, did you see anything on that? I'm looking over the uh, uh, Jeldwind info right now, uh, sort of addressing uh, Doug's point. The tracks themselves look like they're white. Yes, they are. And so when the, the, the track will be visible from the street side when the upper sash obviously is in the up position. So part of that will be visible. Uh, however, uh, the applicant stated that the trim is going to be white. Yeah. Or, did I get that right? That's correct. The, the trim will be white, trim and all the other areas. So it's just going to wrap white. around, and there's going to be white until it hits the sash, and then you're done. Okay. Correct. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that's fine. I misunderstood um, when there was a reference to the trim. I um, heard the wrong color. So sorry about that. The uh, white uh, jam liners will work out uh, fine under those circumstances. Not that it wouldn't, uh, it would have been a deal breaker uh, if we were looking at an application that was all one color, but it was just something that had come to my mind because there was so m much answered here already. That was one of the few questions I had. Is there anyone from the commission uh, that wishes to speak or comment or question about this application? I do have a, I have a couple questions. Um, sure, the, Jennifer. Um, the foundation that's going to, the facade of the foundation will mass, match the existing? Yes, it will, as best possible. 
And then the, um, I'm a little concerned about the roof because you're going to try to match what's already there. How old is that roof? So um, we're actually concerned about that too. Um, so if it does not match, we are going to peel back and reshingle the entire roof, which is probably what's going to happen. So <coughs> if you can't find a match, then you'll redo the entire thing. Correct. Yeah. I talked to the three contractors and that was a topic of discussion. So it'll be in the bid to replace all the shingles. Okay. Um, and then my other, I think my final question was, um, you spec out the back steps in a black and white scheme to match, but can you tell us what that scheme is? What part's going to be black and what part's going to be white? <laughs> I want to see one rail black, one rail white. Oh, like no, no, no. Um, so what we would do is the two handrails would be black and possibly the stair tread would be black. The rest would be white. Um, the way our house is set up now, there's actually a black wrought iron rail on the front and uh, the stair treads are painted. Actually, I think the stair treads are all the same. So when we repaint it, we're either gonna leave the stair treads all white or do the top stair tread black and the front of it white. Jen, uh, did you have more questions besides those you've already brought up? I think that's it for me. Um, while we're on the uh, question of the stairs, I uh, do have an additional question about the railing. Uh, the description of the railing, it looks like these are floating balusters. And they are uh, in the document that's called Specs and Details, looking at maybe the third or fourth page. Yeah, I put a detail in there of right. how the steps would be constructed. Just a basic one. They're, um, you can imagine, they're mainly deck stairs is what they're right. constructed like. My only question is, is we have uh, only, in my recollection, approved these once recently, this type of format where the um, baluster is attached to the side of the rail rather than meeting the bottom rail. And we did that in a place uh, in a home on Church Street where the um, where there's a rail on both sides of the um, of the spindle or of the baluster in essence to allow draining but to disguise the fact that it's attached to the side of a rail rather than meeting the top of a bottom rail so to speak as you would normally see above a toe kick on a um, railing so i didn't know if there were if i missed uh, if i misread what the drawing is trying to show or if indeed there, you were planning to expose the uh, connection between the uh, balusters and the um, bottom rail as being something that's a side connection. Let me actually pull up my drawing real quick and make sure I don't miss Sure, take it. your time. And in the meantime, I don't know if any other commissioner okay, saw that. I think you're exactly right. I think this is um, you know, what we'd expect to see on a back deck on a house where we might not be able to see it. The caveat to that is when I drove by, I think that might be what they have right now. So that is what we have. So that's why I picked that detail. Oh, I see. And so, so I figured it was like, oh, that's back there. I don't want to get crazy with them. I'll just okay. do what's back there. Actually, Steve, we'd prefer that you get crazy with it. I, the only reason okay. you make that an issue is because it's what you already have. I think it's a little bit disguised by the fact that it's painted white. And so it maybe is a, it stands out less to us than it would if it was a natural wood. Um, it certainly is not my first choice. And I think it's a chance for you to improve a detail that is visible from the road and will make you happy if it looks really pretty. Um, there's a, I think we can approve you know, what you've asked for because it is what you have but I do think um, it's a great opportunity for you to look at some other products and maybe make a nice detail back there. Um, that'll be a pretty improvement for the back of the house. Would you all be able to send me one? 
or two that I would can, be like you, hey you can do this if you want to because i'm fine doing a little improved railing i just being unaware of what i don't know the community as well i didn't want to put something in there that was a no-no understand oh. I, there are some options here that we can review among the commissioners uh, in the public meeting or with you now um but the um i think there can be some guidance there and i appreciate okay. jen helping to point out that the inspiration is what's there now right doug i can yes. draw, i can draw something up quickly send it to kim and then uh kim can send it to the applicant thank you the house that i'm speaking uh just so the applicant knows the house that i'm speaking of is on the corner of rosedale and church street uh the uh school side of uh church street facing church and uh it basically looks just like this drawing uh but it has uh railings on both sides uh to mask the way that they're attached and then Vasek uh, or, or Vasek kim or anyone else can provide you with a few other options if you're looking for something more traditional in its construction as well i did okay. have one other question about or uh, one other comment to make about the uh roof and about this addition just generally, which is that um, generally the uh, standards of the interior department uh, tell us that additions should look distinct from the original property. And I think that that guidance is something we take very seriously. At the same time, when you're in a position where the house itself uh, is somewhat undersized in its current form, and where your addition, in essence, is completing it, I think that we can embrace uh, an addition that matches the rest of the building, which is why it's so important that the roof not give away the uh, fact of the addition in that case. So that's just this commissioner's thought. And I, at this point, will yield to any other commissioners that have any questions or comments for you at this time. Doug, I have a question, Kim. Sure. Um, if you look at the screen, is is this the house you're talking about? Uh, no, it's not actually. It's the White House. Uh, it's their the front side? porch. Oh, yes, front. it's the. Okay, there it is. It's that house just to the right. Thank you for looking for that. Okay. They came to the commission. Uh, there it is. This yeah. one? Thank you so much, Kim. Yep. Yeah, so if you can see that, Steve. I mean, that would make it look not just like a second thought entry, that would make it a really pretty back entry. Yeah, that, um, I like that. So if you guys wanna write that in to match that, that's, I'm all for that. Thank you so much uh, for that, Kim, and for uh, your openness, uh, Mr. Applicant, and uh, to Jen for uh, thinking the same, along the same lines as I was. Uh, at this point, are there any other commissioners that haven't had a chance to speak that would like to? Yes, Doug, uh, Chris here. Uh, Thank you, just Chris. Just like that, and that back porch, um, you know, because again, we had the app, previous owner of this home opened up that porch, did a beautiful job and really exposed those columns. Not quite sure what that back, he equated to, it really is back stairs. We've covered the stairs and those are great railings on Church and Rosedale, but uh, how is it going to be finished? Because there's some nice shingle uh, in that front porch, how are the sides? We don't really get a view of the side. If it's called back porch, you see the stairs. What's it going to look like? Are we just talking about lattice to show finish, or is he going to? Are we shingling it? What are we doing? Good point. So, so we're we do plan on matching. What is? Let me think. Out front, we have lattice below the porch itself. So there would be a lattice below, and that's what currently exists on the house, on the back porch. If you look at, uh, Steve, your first picture, your existing right side elevation north. Yes. Because again, this foundation is so high. So again, you have the clapboard on the first floor and shingle uh, up top. You see how, you, you see that in your, this, this is titled uh, Photo Site Plans Existing Condition. Yep. We're not really talking about the stairs, because obviously the stairs are gonna come out, you've addressed that. But that's kind of a little bit of a landing. Is that four by four? I mean, what's the size? You know, how are you going to? Are you just going to put? Um, 
you know, AZAC type material and then finish it off with the lattice. I don't really see the lattice on the front porch, frankly. Oh, so that's because there's a giant bush in the way, but there's lattice all the way around so you can access underneath the porch. Are you looking at the front of the porch or the front? I'm talking about the front picture, the front elevation. Oh, the very front? Yeah, so the plan was not to match that because that's not what's in the back of the house right now. Sure. Um, we do have the, at top where the roof line comes down, there'll be shingle up it's there. It's covered. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. That come down in the back. And then since we're only gonna be about four feet up, right now there is white lattice that covers the, finish the, the bottom of the okay. stairs. But the top roof line that comes down, that's yep. all just to match the house in the back. Okay, so the soft and everything will be finished off similar to the, the balance of the house. Okay, that's all right. Nice, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Chris. Are there any other commissioners with questions? Just identify yourself, go forward. Okay, uh, Steve, I just have one last question, which is to pick up where um, Chris left off, which is, is the general feel of this new back uh, exit similar to what's there now, just in a new place? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak at this time? Hearing none. Stephen, thank you for your time, uh, both at the pre-application hearing and tonight. You're welcome to stay for the public meeting which is about to commence. I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I will entertain a motion to close the public meeting and, I'm sorry, close the public hearing and open the public meeting on all of the aforementioned items. So moved. Second. So that was Mark and Jen. All those in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries, the public hearing is closed, and the public meeting is opened. We'll begin with application number 5020. That's Amy Northrop Wittor, the chicken coop on Center Street. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, that, so that's, uh, I heard the, the uh, I just want to identify the motions. I think they were Chris and Damon. Damien, Damien second. Thank you, Damien. You're welcome. Is there uh, some discussion on this? Hey, the motion again, you're talking about a seven by four chicken coop. There's, we've approved a few of them around town. Um, Again, if it's a noise issue or other, it's out of our purview. I think it's appropriate for that spot. It's fenced, the yard is fenced. Um, I have no problem with it. Yeah, and to kind of echo what Chris is saying, you know, what's in and outside of our purview, I don't think smell is in our purview, but I think just for the record that Arden did a good job of uh, allaying some concerns that people may have. I, uh, this is Commissioner sorry, ahead, Raymond. Mark. Yep, Commissioner Raymond. Um, on Hartford Ave, I have uh, two neighbors, both with uh, existing chicken coops, uh, one relatively new, um, and they are both absolutely perfect, that we don't have any issues with them. Um, you know, it's a nice thing to, uh, to have in the district. It kind of brings, in my mind, kind of brings us back to uh, a little bit of the farmlands that we used to have here. <laughs> um, and it's always nice when the neighbors share the eggs with you. <clears throat> But uh, no, I, I just wanted to say that uh, having ha having been surrounded by two chicken coops for over a year now, um, I think it's perfectly appropriate. Mark, thank you for uh, providing that uh, firsthand experience uh, for us. Is there anyone else from the commission that wishes to speak, whether or not you're voting tonight? All right, the only thing that I would echo is again, uh, we don't regulate usage. Uh, that doesn't mean we're not uh, concerning of the neighbor that was not in favor, uh, but it does seem to be a circumstance where if these uh, coops were causing a problem uh, in their deployment, the town would probably be hearing about them on the zoning uh, and use side. Uh, 
uh, and it appears that uh, maybe the experience of the neighbors is similar uh, to Mr. Raymond's. And uh, in this particular case, uh, the representations of the homeowner about uh, the care that's going to go into this are re is uh, reassuring with respect to that. But as a structure, this is a structure that uh, I think would, wouldn't have uh, an imposition on the district uh, and isn't uh, incompatible with a residential street in that part of the district either especially when you consider that the community gardens are just on the other side of the street. So the agricultural feel of the area is uh, fairly dominant, even though that corner nearby is as dense as it is. So that's uh, my uh, contribution to this. I'll call a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 5021, the fencing project of Julie Costello uh, at um, 340, I believe it was 341 Main Street. Move to approve is submitted. I'll second. Thank you. The second, uh, the first was Jens and the second was? Mark Raymond. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate think, it just to make sure the record was clear. I think that this is a um, minimal, minimally intrusive fence to solve a problem for the homeowner to gain a little privacy. The black fence is going to be virtually invisible to people passing by, um, and it will just be really that one panel we're looking at. Even if you do have a, a glancing view of that black fence, it's perfectly appropriate and has minimal impact on the district. This is a very deep lot, uh, and even though the sidewalk is close to the public sidewalk is so close to the house, the house itself is very long front to back. This will have, uh, I agree with uh, Jen, uh, will be a, both attractive and it won't be in a position on the district. Any other comments of any other commissioners? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application number 5022, that's Judith Keene, the project at 126 Broad Street, a uh, fencing project. Is there a motion? Move to approve as submitted. I'll second, Mark Raymond. Thank you. Uh, discussion? You know, I think it's an unfortunate situation um, and this is the easiest solution to it. The fence will have a minimal impact and, um, you know, certainly won't detract from the beautiful property. I think it, to Mrs. Keene's point, um, you know, it's something we need to be aware of. We have other uh, situations in the district where something is deemed temporary or in this case, motor vehicle ish um, but if it's going to be parked as a storage center then it there could be a time where it does come under our purview regardless of the fact that it has wheels on it so i think it's something especially in this prominent location on the weathersteel green um, you know it's unfortunate that it falls just under um, what we could regulate or what the town would regulate and it's equally unfortunate that it, the homeowner is placing it in such a prominent position but we have really no choice on that. So I think that this fence is a good option. Um, but like I said, you know, it's, it bears watching um, to see if it ends up being there permanently and then it becomes a structure and then, you know, we'll be back at it again. Um, Doug and Jen, um, this, this kind of application is new to me. I've never seen such a situation. You're both attorneys. So I throw this out here as a question, if it's appropriate, is there an appropriate channel for uh, applicants like Judith to um, file some kind of complaint? Well, that's the whole point. Um, she has already checked and it's of a size that the town does permit apparently. And so, you know, we're stuck with it in its current form. Okay. Thank you for uh, the question. I'll just say, uh, as opposed to answering it directly, uh, a couple of things. One is, uh, 
this property happens to have a chicken coop on it. And uh, I think that chicken coop, in, in part because of the size of the property, has uh, been a successful installation in the sense that I don't believe uh, complaints about it have uh, been evident. Uh, they have uh, engaged in care of a property that would seem to indicate that um, there's going to be, uh, that this is not going to turn into something that it isn't. If the trailer turns into something that it isn't, uh, that doesn't mean that the town can't engage uh, some regulatory enforcement regarding it, uh, either under current rules or under changed ones. So uh, I think that Jen is right. Uh, it's something to keep an eye on. At the same time, the sight lines here are very narrow. And so any fence in that location is going to have a minimal impact on the district because it's not really going to be viewed um, except in a very narrow plane. And uh, if there are any other commissioners that wish to speak regarding this, please uh, identify yourself and join the discussion. Hearing none, I'll, I'll call a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. 50 dash, I'm sorry, 5022 at 126 Broad Street. Finally, application number 5023, Stephen Caprio, the project at 311 Garden Street. Is there a motion? Move to approve as submitted. Uh, I'd like to maybe add some stipulations. Yeah, I've, I've got steps. Yep. Um, move to approve with the following steps that the if the applicant is unable to match the existing roof color, that the entire roof be redone in a pre-approved color on file with the town. The second, that the foundation be faced to match the existing foundation. The third, that the back porch have a rail system to match that on the corner of Rosedale and Church Street, 119 Church Street, with white newels, posts, and rail tops, with treads in gray or black at the applicant's option. And finally, that the back porch have a wood lattice bottom, a framed white wood lattice bottom. I'm sorry, you cut out that last part. I didn't hear that last part. Sorry, the final that the back porch have a framed white wood lattice bottom. Second the motion with the stipulations. Thank you, Damien. Is there any discussion or are there any other addi uh, additional stipulations that anyone uh, has spotted here? I don't Basic, did I miss anything? On mute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You're on mute, Vasek. There we all go. Right. Let's try that again. A little slow on the button here. No, I think <laughs> I think you got it all. Uh, one of the things that Chris addressed was about how the back uh, porch sh should be addressed, especially the part below the deck. Uh, keep in mind that this is not. We're not trying to make two front porches. We're trying to have a secondary entrance. So having it with a a lighter look that can be achieved with lattice or some other method uh, is certainly appropriate to differentiate it from the front porch, which I sure. think is a good thing. Um, I think you know I, I'm certainly open to modifications on that back porch. Um, you know, we gave an example that I think is a good guideline, but if Steve decides that he finds that there's a product that he likes better, um, that is similar, we're certainly open to, um, an amendment at his convenience. And I, there, there's lots so of ways to build a porch. So, and a lot of them will basically do a traditional porch look, 
uh, that will work well there. So yeah, he's got lots and lots of options. Uh, we presented the applicant with one option. I'm going to dig out a couple others and send them towards uh, Kim so she can forward them as she sees fit. And I'm sure that something good can, will come out of this. I just, and, I'm sorry, uh, go ahead. I just hope that, uh, you know, as well prepared as this application was and how well drawn up it is, I just really hope that everything will turn out as in this same level of detail uh, in construction as it was in the drawing. So. I think I that's think a good, good comment, comment because the, uh, uh, if the homeowner's conscientiousness could be matched by his contractors, uh, that will make all the difference in the world, which brings me to the roof, which is uh, it's important that when he's talking to his contractor, that it wouldn't be enough just that if he finds the original color and manages to uh, buy the same color under his contract, that shouldn't constitute a match if the other one is faded and it's going to be impossible to create the match uh, under the contract. It, there should be a, uh, a visual match. And if it isn't, uh, then this stipulation uh, will govern. So um, I think this is going to be, a, uh, has the potential to be one of our more successful projects. And I think uh, we're all looking forward to uh, commencement uh, and successful completion. Great. Any other comments by any other commissioners? Just identify yourself for the record, please. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of the motion with stipulations, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved with stipulation. Thank you, everyone. We just have a few more uh, items on the agenda before uh, the adjournment. Approval of minutes for June 9th. Those Move. were provided. Move to approve as submitted. Thank you, Jen. Mark? It's you, it's you, me, and Basic. Yep, okay. I'll second it. Thank you. Uh, discussion, as usual, we thank our uh, reporter, Linda. And at this time, I always thank our uh, Historic District Coordinator, Kim, for uh, your professionalism and your assistance, especially uh, with the uh, additional work you've undertaken during the corona period. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Those who are in attendance uh, at that meeting have voted uh, and the uh, minutes are approved. Uh, other business, public comments and general matters of the historic district are there any members of the public here that have uh, reserved time with our commissioner? Kim? I'm sorry, I was just- Oh, finally, we got the-, the <laughs> I was wondering who that background noise was. <laughs> sorry <got> about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ellie. No. Hi, Ellie. Hey, Ellie. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. You can't, you can't hide now, Ellie. We all <laughs> saw you. <laughs> two and a half. Oh my God, oh, so really cute. Hi, Ellie. <laughs> um, so, I don't have anything, but I great. have to say that I um, I lost my internet, and it's been a problem at the town hall. I guess around a, 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 during meetings, that internet completely leaves. So I had to log back in. I missed I missed a lot. So I'm sorry. Okay, not a problem. I would say if there are any members of the public watching. Uh, or that w wanted to speak and didn't get a chance to, it appears that there are extenuating circumstances here and we would certainly welcome you at the next meeting. At this point, uh, I'll ask if there's a report of the Historic District Coordinator. None. And is there any additional correspondence uh, to what has already been uh, brought to our attention? No. Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So I move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it is 8.30 and we are adjourned. Thank you everyone for participating in this meeting, uh, commissioners night. and otherwise. Bye. 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 I can just, um, bye. Bye. You made yeah. it meeting. Thank you. <laughs>
if I can just ask that, um, hold on, let me stop recording.